Leslie volunteers in Tianjin, China, help migrant workers caught in last week's explosions with their living expense. We learn the importance and value of a hospital volunteer from the perspective of a first-time volunteer. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Dennis Wu. Thank you for joining us. Kicking off today's program in Tianjin, China. Plenty of medical supplies and aid have arrived in the city after the August 12th explosions, as the government currently has the situation under control. Cixi has focused its attention on migrant workers in the city. For those injured in explosions and heading home, the charity is providing them with subsidies to cover living expenses. After the Tianjin explosions, residents live in fear of cyanide contamination. As local hospitals are amply supplied and staffed, the Cixi Foundation is instead focusing on caring for migrant workers in the city. There are a lot of migrant workers here in Tianjin, and they just so happen to be heading home as well. Though the government is subsidizing their bus fares, they might not have enough for their living expenses. So Master Jinya is quite worried and has asked us to help them. Han Bing had only just arrived a month ago. One of his feet was injured in the explosion, so he will now be traveling home with nearly 200 other migrant workers who have also received city's aid. Staying in China, Typhoon Sotolo that caused tremendous damage in Taiwan also struck Fujian province hard, leaving the city of Fudin flooded by torrential rains. Now that the waters have receded, city volunteers have taken to the streets to help with the cleanup effort which inspired many passers-by to do the same. Flash floods triggered by torrential rainfall in Fujian's mountains have flooded the streets of Fuding. After the water receded, a group of volunteers happily took to the streets to help with the cleanup. At home, I am just serving my family. Here, I am serving everyone, so it's not the same. I feel great that everyone is doing this together. At first, there were only volunteers wearing to these volunteer vests, but soon even passers-by joined the work, including those who didn't live nearby. After seeing so many people at work, I thought I would come by and contribute myself. It's really nothing. Since everyone is doing it, why shouldn't I do my share, right? A woman living nearby decided to brew some tea to help quench the volunteer's thirst. I saw that you had come, so I decided to make some tea. I added some cold water so the tea wouldn't be too hot. The grocery shop owner also brought bottled water from his shop for the volunteers. Next, we travel to Nepal. In fact, the poor 80-year-old Chini Maya lives alone in a less than ideal living environment. After hearing about the senior situation, Cixi volunteers came to visit her and help clean up her home. In quick tone, Nepal, Cixi volunteers have asked an 80-year-old granny to kindly leave her home in back the port temporarily. With the help of translators, they let the solitary senior know that they are here to help clean up her home. 
The beddings and clothes are all laid out under the sun to disinfect them. When the cleaning is done, volunteers then mix red ochre and cow dung together to plaster the floor, a common local construction technique and one that holds religious meaning. A Zijijin's portable bed is neatly prepared, along with some dry goods and cooking oil for the senior. Moving on to the United States, every year, storms hitting the state of Alaska chip away at its coastline, which continues to recede at an alarming rate, especially in Shishmarif. Next, on the disappearing frontier, we learn how one family's life on the island was changed forever due to climate change. And my is cooking again. Making a caribou shoot. Caribou. Families are at the heart of the Inupiaq culture, and Clara and Shelton Kakiak have grown theirs right here by the Chukchi Sea. We got how many grandkids now? Eleven boys, two granddaughters, and one great. <laughs> Chile, one great. Their youngest child was Norman Charlie, an athletic and energetic hunter. I had the youngest one, that boy. We always call him boy. That was the youngest one. He graduated from here, and then he go hunting. He always go hunting whenever he got chance. I think he moved down to Fairbanks in 2003 with his wife. And then after that, he, he take time off from his jobs and come up and do the hunting for us. He liked to hunt, that's why. He liked to come back here and go hunt, and then go back to Furbanks after he hunt. He just loved to hunt. That's how it happened. I tried to wait until about four, five, five o'clock in the morning, and then and fell asleep, had little rest. And then about six o'clock in the morning, our, our phone rang. She answered. Mm -hmm. We didn't know till they told us early in the morning that he fell through the ice. His partner got nothing to ditch him. No rope, nothing, no sled, nothing, just his rifle. Just his, couldn't help him. That, that was really bad. Really bad for our family. are not alone in their struggle. The dangers of weaker ice buildup are something that many locals have become very familiar with. We've had people falling through the ice in the past few years. We, we, we had a fatality uh, a few years ago. When the ice used to be uh, four to six feet thick of all white ice. But now it, it breaks up so early, it doesn't freeze as uh, solid. It isn't like ice that was 50 years ago when I was a kid. Back then, uh, the hunters would be all on ice already right now with their dog teams. We'd be able to go out like 25, 30 miles out to harvest uh, for bearded seal. Hunting and fishing provide their main source of food, but these activities are becoming riskier and riskier to do. Things have changed so rapidly as far as ice that it, it become quite dangerous to be around the ice now. We do know that it's um, not as thick as it used to be, and we are very careful. We learned that from, from the past. The 
Tupiaks have an old custom here to name newborns in honor of a community member who has passed on. You mean the boat's his namesake? Yeah, he's just quite a few here. When they make boys, they have to name him his name, you know? His namesakes are five and six year old now. That's our tradition, you know? Yeah. That was the tradition from centuries. Right now, you live with your grandson. Yeah, he lived with us. We raised him, too. We're so happy for him. She helped around in the house, get wash water or ice, bring some ice. They help us on heavy lifting. Family, I think it's everything. <laughs> yeah. Yuning and Jai counties have said, are said to have the highest number of cases of liver cancer in Taiwan. Besides waiting for a cadaveric liver transplant, a living donor liver transplant is another way to save a life. Next, we take a look at how Dalin City Hospital's Organ Transplantation Center brings hope to liver cancer patients and their families. Many residents living in Yunlin County, Jiayi County, or near Budai Township have hepatitis C. These areas lack convenient public transportation, government funding, and adequate medical personnel. The public's perception of hepatic disease is often associated with those who work construction jobs. Due to limited access to medical resources, many living in Yunling and Jiayi tend to develop liver-related illnesses. I knew I had hepatitis some 10 years ago. I used to drink with my friends after work all the time. About two years ago, I realized that my health had deteriorated. During the worst of it, I had to remove about 8,000 cc of ascites a week. Every year, more than a thousand patients across Taiwan wait anxiously for a liver transplant. For many, a living donor liver transplant gives them a second chance at life. However, unlike a cadaveric liver transplant, medical staff from different departments are required to be on site throughout the procedure to ensure the safety of both the donor and recipient. <laughs> Besides us, a cardiac surgeon, a plastic surgeon, an anesthesiologist, and several nurses need to be in the operating room to make sure the surgery goes smoothly. Everyone has to work as a team. According to the government statistics, Yunling and Jai counties have the highest incidences of liver cancer and highest death rates from liver cancer. As many of the patients are breadwinners, their illnesses often plunge their families into financial difficulties. Thus, a successful liver transplant not only saves the patient but their family as well. Whenever my father is admitted to the hospital, he will tell me beforehand what to do if anything goes wrong. He was in bad shape and had to be in the intensive care unit constantly. Unwilling to see patients with liver diseases traveling long distances to seek treatment, Darling Tsuji Hospital's medical staff work hands in hand to offer living donor liver transplants, a procedure that only a few nearby hospitals can complete. Hospital volunteers not only give their time to serve others unconditionally, they also play an important role in helping make the hospital experience better for patients and their families. In our next report, we join a member of the Ciji Performance Association at the Taipei Ciji Hospital to see some of the challenges he encountered on his first volunteer experience. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Ma Guoxian, member of the Ciji Performers Association. Today, I'm going to the Ciji Hospital for my first volunteer experience. Actually, I'm a bit nervous right now, since this is my first time, and I don't know what to expect. I hope the Ciji brothers and sisters will guide me along the way, and I also hope more people can join such a meaningful cause. Let's go. The lobby is a unique space of the hospital because you don't know whether the person coming through the entrance is a patient or a family member. So we got to be mindful when we approach them. We should refrain from using words like welcome or see you again. When we had to engage the visitors, all of a sudden, I was at a loss for words. I was actually quite nervous and just stood next to the sister. I was afraid I was going to say the wrong thing. Sometimes we also find ourselves in need of assistance when we are at the hospital. When I'm helping others, I feel like I'm also helping myself in the process. <laughs> Those who saw him were ecstatic and wanted to talk to him. They were already feeling much better before they've even seen a doctor. It was really a bonus. I got a fright because she felt nauseous all of a sudden and I didn't know what to do. But the sister reacted immediately and rushed over with a plastic bag. For first-time volunteers, you really don't know what to do under these circumstances. He spotted a grandma carrying a bunch of stuff by herself, so he rushed over to help her. He's learned a lot in the past hour. I made a vow to volunteer at a hospital at least once a month. I hope others out there will also be willing to join our ranks. Next, we meet young vegetarian Chen Pengyu, whose family has adopted a vegetarian diet and even grows their own vegetables. And it was thanks to her participation in a sutra performance that Pengyu became a vegetarian. Here's more. What does grandma grow? Sweet potato leaves, cucumbers, ladies' fingers, green beans, pumpkins, bitter gourds, lufa, and other gourds. Seeing meat dishes, she says she can't eat them. She likes to eat vegetables. If we eat meat, animals will be in pain. She developed urticaria twice due to eating contaminated seafood. The first time was not so bad because we discovered it early, but the second time was bad. 
we went to emergency room for three consecutive days. On the fourth day, the doctor said she had to be hospitalized, as she had already received the highest dosage of antibiotics that children can take. In addition, we took part in the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra and had to observe a vegetarian diet for 108 days, so we began to embrace vegetarianism. My grandmother passed away that year, and we had to observe a vegetarian diet for 49 days. Then we also took part in the sutra adaptation, so we continued to embrace vegetarianism. After that, we no longer wanted to consume meat. Her younger brother invites friends at school to adopt a vegetarian diet. He said, don't eat meat anymore. When he was in kindergarten, the teacher asked the cook to prepare vegetarian food for the entire class on Mondays because of him. When we ate meat, she fell ill often. I don't know if it's because children from different families are gathered there. After we adopted a vegetarian diet, she sees doctor a lot less. The volunteers have long been demystifying the superstitions associated with the seventh lunar month by holding blessing ceremonies every year during this time. This year, since several man-made and natural disasters have recently occurred in Taiwan, Zhi volunteers in Taipei Stan District also asked ceremony attendees to write down their well wishes for all mankind. In the seventh lunar month, we advocate vegetarianism and encourage people to stop burning jazz paper so they can save money to help the needy. Zhi volunteers advocated the true meaning behind the lunar month of July and led attendees in a prayer for the needy. We ask them to write down their well wishes for the needy. There are a lot of disasters in the world, and city volunteers have done a lot. If we can give of ourselves, the world will be a better place. At another blessing ceremony in Danshui, city volunteers advocated vegetarianism through a play. In the audience is Chen Mingzi, who has followed a vegetarian diet since taking part in a sutra performance. After adopting a vegetarian diet, I've changed physically and spiritually. By changing one's diet, a person can change himself. I was a bit shocked to hear how a chicken is slaughtered. I hope I can tell other people about this. During this auspicious month, not only are people encouraged to embrace vegetarianism, they are also asked to stop burning joss paper. With kind thoughts in our heart, the Buddhas will bless us even if we simply clasp our hands. The volunteers hope members of the public will take action to show gratitude and respect as they mark the auspiciousness of Lunar Month of July. At the end of today's program, we travel to Malaysia. Zhi volunteers from Kelang arrived in Pulau Ketam to award new shoot scholarships to students in need. That's all the time we have for. Thank you for watching Dire Headlines. Goodbye.